Thank you. Um, kind of interesting to find myself talking to uh, a, a monitoring cooperative which focuses on forests and be talking about tourism. Uh, but um, this project truly is a, an example of collaboration. Um, you notice all the various uh, logos on the, on the title slide here. Uh, I'd like to mention a few people specifically. Uh, first, my uh, my longtime colleague Bob Manning, uh, professor in the Rubenstein School, Lisa Chase, who's in uh, Extension at the University of Vermont, uh, Greg Riddell at the Vermont Department of Tourism and Marketing, uh, Megan Smith, who leads that department uh, primarily, uh, she, she was the primary funder of this project, uh, Craig Whipple at Vermont State Parks, Lisa Sanchez at, at the Welcome Centers, uh, the Vermont Attraction Association, and then what makes this truly collaborative and a, and a cooperative uh, study is that um, I did not go out and collect any data myself. Uh, the staff at all of these places uh, collected data, and, and uh, uh, I'll tell you a little more about that as we go. Uh, so why monitor tourism uh, and tourists in Vermont? Uh, well, tourism is, a vi is of vital importance to the Vermont economy. I think we all know that it's one of the major players in, in the industry in, industry in Vermont. Uh, and the more we know about visitors, uh, the stronger our tourism base can be. Uh, the more we know, the more we can grow. Um, specifically within that tourism uh, niche is nature-based tourism, um, and primarily looking at forest-based tourism. Um, a lot of our winter tourism happens in forested areas. Um, so this, the, the importance of nature-based tourism uh, can lend an economic justification for actually protecting natural resources, the things we heard Mike and, uh, and all those folks earlier talk about. Um, and, and state parks are heavily reliant on fees for their budgets. Thus, uh, visitation is really important uh, because if their budget is dependent on fees and people don't come and visit, it's kind of hard to maintain parks and, and forests if, if those fees aren't coming in. So a little bit about the study and how we accomplished it. Um, we handed out something over 8,000 uh, self-administered questionnaires. And again, staff at these various places I'm going to talk about um, actually administer the questionnaires to their visitors. Uh, so we're very thankful for that. Uh, sampling sites were geographically all over the state, literally from every corner, in the middle, everywhere. Uh, we conducted, we've conducted the survey in 25 state, uh, Vermont state parks. Um, all of those had campsites, camping, uh, campgrounds in them. We, uh, we, we distributed surveys at eight of Vermont's welcome centers. And uh, actually, this number is incorrect. There's not 13. We're, there are 16 attraction sites across the state uh, that, we, that we've uh, distributed questionnaires. Uh, you can see we've, we've collected a lot of data. Um, and this is over the last couple of years. Uh, primarily in the summer, and that's one limitation I'll talk about when we, when we start looking at the number of children in groups. Um, uh, we haven't had a lot of response from ski areas, where you'd expect to see a lot of families with children. And so that's one limitation of our data. Um, we used an adaptive strategy, that is, if something didn't work at a specific site, we'd work together to find out what would work to get their uh, visitors to actually fill out the survey. Um, places uh, handed out three to four completed, uh, got three to four completed questionnaires per day. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, and that was the idea. We didn't want to make it burdensome on the staff. But if you do that every day over two years, suddenly you've got a lot of questionnaires. Um, and uh, some of these businesses are only open in the summertime, so you know, they drop out of the sample in the wintertime, that sort of thing. Um, the establishment selected certain times of day that they would hand out surveys, and then the next uh, visitor to enter the, the establishment would be asked to, to participate. If they said yes, they got a survey. If no, they'd ask the next group until they got those three per day. Um, uh, welcome centers um, ask visitors who are actually looking at information. So we're, we're very interested in visitors to the state and also uh, 
people from within Vermont who may be traveling out, outside their normal, normal zone. Um, so in the welcome centers, that's sometimes hard to differenti differentiate from people who are just interested in using the bathroom or getting their free cup of coffee. So um, people who are looking at the information stacks are the ones that they approach to do the survey. So now into the data, um, uh, since I realize time is limited, um, most of our visitors are repeat visitors um, in, in all cases. So we looked at state parks, welcome centers, and attractions. Um, state park visitors, 81% of the people we talked with are re repeat visitors, a lot of them Vermonters. That's our biggest Vermont uh, population in the survey. <coughs> but majorities in both the uh, welcome centers and attractions are also, also repeat visitors. Um, how many years um, since their most recent visit? State park um, visitors often come on a yearly basis. In fact, they'll make their reservation for next year while they're there this year. Um, but welcome center visitors and attraction visitors um, you know, are a little farther back, but they, they have, there are, a lot of them are repeat visitors. Um, those that have been here before come on average two to three times, uh, have, have been here two to three times previously. Uh, so there's some experience, there's some knowledge about what Vermont has to offer and it brings people back. Um, friends and family are usually in surveys come up as the, the biggest influence on how people heard about came to Vermont. Um, and it's no surprise here. Um, so marketing to Vermonters about Vermont is not a waste of time because they tell their out-of-state friends and, and relatives, here's what we have to offer, and they bring people in. So uh, that's one thing. Now what do folks like to do while they're here? Um, I, I've ordered these via the state park visitors, um, but the, the activities you see on this table um, indicate activities that had at least 40% in one of the categories of, of visitors that we're talking about here. So for instance, hiking and backpacking, um, you know, two-thirds of state park visitors hike or backpack, which makes a lot of sense to me. Um, just about everybody, um, all the groups, a lot of sightseers, people want to see uh, our, na our, natural, our natural uh landscapes, uh, canoeing and kayaking, uh, you can see a lot of outdoor activities are popular, particularly with state park residents, uh, visitors, but also other folks are, are doing those types of things as well. So nature-based uh, tourism, really important. Um, not surprisingly, uh, we're a drive destination. As uh, Colleen mentioned earlier this morning, we're within one day's drive of 70 million people. Um, some weekends it feels like they're all here, but um, that's really not the case. Uh, but most come via their, their car. We do have some folks that arrive via airlines, but um, it's mostly a drive destination. We also ask people, um, what prevents you from visiting us more often? Um, and not surprisingly, uh, it's a lack of available time. Um, our prices don't seem to be pricing anybody out of the market. Um, there are some other, other things, like I'd like to see other places, so you know, I might not come back. You know, quite so often to Vermont because I'm going to Wyoming or wherever, but um, primarily it's just a lack of available vacation time. Um, now I'm getting into s something that this is one of the limitations I think where it shows up. So we ask people uh, what's, what's the size of your group, your, your traveling party, and it's usually one to two uh, adults, uh, some groups, some larger groups, but mostly one to two adults. Um, but this is children. How many children in the group? And you see that zero is by and large the, uh, the largest category. Um, however, um, state parks double the average uh, of the other two types of, of visitors we, we talked with. So I see this, and I'll hit, hit this in the conclusions, I see this as an opportunity. I think our natural areas, particularly the state parks, are an opportunity to get the next generation out into the, into the woods. Um, and they should build on that. Um, Let's see, um, Vermont made products, largely forest products, things like maple syrup are something that people take back with them, uh, so that's very important. Um, there's a lot of other categories here of how people spend their money while they're here, um, but um, particularly for attraction <coughs> visitors, Vermont products are very important. So even if they don't get out in nature, they're maybe taking a, a forest product back with, with them when they go home. We also ask people um, what types of uh, of uh, attractions or things to do in Vermont were important to them. We asked about agricultural, cultural, uh, seasonal outdoor recreation, natural as in the natural landscape, and Vermont made products. You'll notice that in each of the categories of visitors, 
the natural landscape was the most important. Now everything was important. Everything was kind of above that three, kind of that mid-level of importance. But in every category, the natural landscape was the most important thing for, for visitors to Vermont. Um, when do they expect to come again? A lot of them expect to come, come within a year. Um, others just don't know. Uh, depends on you know, where else they're going, how much time they have. And then um, income of visitors, um, pretty stable state park and welcome center visitors, median income of our sample around 62.5 uh, for a household income. Attractions visitors, slightly more. Um, so what does this tell us? Well, uh, visitors rate natural attractions like mountains, wildlife, state parks, et cetera, as the most important type of attraction here in Vermont. Um, a majority of visitors are return visitors. On average, uh, return visitors come two to three times. Um, visitors are influenced to visit by family and friends, so it's really important to market to those folks. Uh, most visitors come from nearby states like Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut. Uh, most visitors travel in groups of two adults, and uh, many visitors intend to return within a year. So what does this really mean? Uh, again, Vermont's natural landscape is of primary importance. Um, and this, is, this gets back to the economic incentive for maintaining that natural landscape. Um, this gives, uh, you know, gives our legislators some, some ammunition when they go, or, or our, our constituents some, some uh, ammunition when they go to the legislature and say we need to protect these places, not just because it's the right thing to do, but also because our visitors expect it. Um, because many visitors return, they're knowledgeable about what the state has to offer. Uh, and, uh, Promotion of Vermont in Vermont. Uh, we bring our friends and, neighbor, and friends and relatives here, uh, so promoting it within the state is a good idea. Um, Vermont State Parks offer that opportunity to introduce the next generation to the outdoors. And finally, Vermont-made products are are important and can serve as a reminder of Vermont to people, even if they don't get out into nature. I'm done. <laughs> Attractions and the um, welcome centers have no children in the samples, or children have children. Do you think it's a sample thing as well? I, I think I think um, missing from the attractions are ski areas. Uh -huh. uh, so our, our our winter sampling, where you'd expect a lot of families to come from Boston for a ski weekend, uh, we just have had very little luck getting them to to cooperate and hand out our surveys for us. So I think. We'd see some more children um, in those samples, uh, in the attraction sample, if we had some, some ski areas participate. And some other, other places as well. We did have um, Okemo this summer with their adventure park participate. And so uh, these data were, uh, don't include those data yet. Well, I'll be getting to those very, so, very soon. But um, I think we might see more children in, the, in this year's round. We have led the joining Green River Reservoir State Park. The campsites have lots of children all summer long. So I don't know if it's the way how things are reported to you or if that's just an abnormality. Well, I think, I think also you'll notice that the, uh, the state parks sample had more children, uh, slightly more. Um, I think there are a couple of things that, that are a possibility within sampling. Um, I, I guess I would take less, in, uh, I, I would see less information in the actual number of children in the sample. But the fact that state parks had twice as many, I see that as very hopeful. Um, and so that the actual number of children you know, visiting the state with, with their fam friends and family, uh, there's probably some sampling error. Uh, it's, you know, maybe it's hard to watch your kids while you're filling out a, a brief survey. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and so they may have declined the, the, the survey more often. Um, we need to look at how that gets done. Um, it's a little hard when, you're, when I'm not administering the survey, um, you know, and I have hundred people around the state administering it for me. It's kind of hard to check on that consistently, but that's a possibility. Thank you. If you have any more 